Cheese. You want to look through there and see what it says? Cheese. What does it say? What does the reading say? Um, it says 20 hours. 20 hours. Okay. Bethany and I are going around and we're checking the trees in our yard for sugar content. Yeah. So this is a refractometer. It's not refractometer, but that's how it looks. Refractometer. And this will measure your sugar content in your sap, raw sap. So with this, it actually goes up to uh, 40. The actual measurement reading on it says 30. Um, but this will tell you if you have 2% sugar in your sap or if you might possibly have four. So the way to do it, oh, we're making a little movie for all of our friends on YouTube today, right? Yeah. Okay, we're showing our, showing them how we know the scientific way. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the scientific way to find out how much sugar we have. Yeah. Okay. So you can. This is how much sugar we have. This is how much sugar we have. I just take a little drop on my finger. Don't take it from the tubing because you get condensation built up right on your tubing and then you might just get a drip of water, not an actual drop of sap. So I've got a drop of sap here on the plate. What? Uh-huh. And just close that down. And then we can look right into there. And I've showed this before and I don't know how well it'll show up on camera. It's hard. So, This is actually telling us that we have 2% sugar in this tree. This tree right over had three, and this one had 4% sugar. So we're doing super awesome. Uh, that little visit to the woods the other day yielded us 200 gallons of sap between the yard and the circle of the woods. I did not count how many taps or buckets we have set, but the kids stayed nice and busy at it, and they helped a lot. So we really, they helped a lot. So we really got a lot of sap to boil down. Husband is home together with me today, and we are putting the Suburban back together from the brake job. And... Georgie boy's here. Hi, baby. This is his very first sugar season and he loves mommy's pancakes. Little guy's turned into a beefcake. He needs a lot of energy. You'll be seeing his six month update here real quick. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. Got a very little bit of ice in this bucket. It got real cold last night. And it's supposed to get up to 41 degrees today. All right. Now, I just got ice water on that one. So the whole screen is blue. And that's how you'll know if you take it from your hose or your tubing if you've just got condensation or if you've got sap. Okay, this one. It's about two and a half, close to three. I really wish that would get. Last year I was able to put my cell phone lens right up there. I'll try that. Okay, so to use it, I've got my drop of sap right there. You can see the liquid bubble formed there on the lens. You wait 30 seconds. That gives it a little bit of time to flood that little sample plate and to adjust the temperature. So you just look down the site and I see this tree is just about 3%. Its sister tree right over here is at 3%. So the sap is running really good today. This bucket is just about half full. It is mid-afternoon, probably about 2 o'clock, and we emptied out this bucket. It was full last night around 7 maybe. Oh no, but I want to put my 
my meter in it. Thank you. Have a seat. I'll take you back up to the shop. So I'm going to go up and see what the tote reading is of all of the syrup combined. So we're going to go up and go measure the sugar content of the combined syrup in the tote. So obviously it's not going to all end up being 3 or 4% sap because you're mixing it with 2%. Um, with it all combined in there, you know, we might end up with 25 or 3%, which would be really great. Every little bit helps. Um, the good dry wood cooks it a lot faster, but having a higher sugar content, um, just to know that you're going to be done a little bit sooner than you might expect. Okay, super good news. It all balanced out to an even 3% on our sugar content. So I'm going to go show this to dad and we're going to start up our fire and start cooking. We're supposed to be getting some snow and rain mix tomorrow starting late in the day. So if I let this run during the night and push hard, I will have this cooked up hopefully beforehand, just depending on how much we fire it during the night and how good we get the fire going. Okay, to show you up close inside and without Bethany's help about how many hours or gallons this measures, I wanted to tell you more about this refractometer. A refractometer measures the density of the sap um, by measuring the refractive index of a solution um, that is directly put on here. So I'm reading this directly from my book and it is from the Maple Syrup Producer's Manual. I use this for a lot of stuff and it's got a nice little section here. Uh, a lot of people have asked details about this so I wanted to show you more up close while I can. So um, this model has ATC written on it. And that means it is automatic temperature compensation. So all you have to do is have this and your liquid the same temperature. I'm walking around outside with this in my pocket when I do my testing. So it's automatically going to be the same temperature. Um, if you were going to do it in the house, you would just want it, you know, room temperature. Um, this uh, cover here, your, your lens, when you put your drops of fluid on here, you want to evenly disperse so that you get a good accurate reading. And then when you put this down, you want to make sure it's making contact. This black part pivots, and if you just, you know, put it down, you're not going to get a proper measurement. So you want to make sure that it's all the way down. And if you do have to calibrate it for any reason, mine has a rubber cap over a screw. And there's a small, very small, slotted uh, screwdriver, straight screwdriver for that. And my kit included a very tiny... Um, I guess you would call it a jeweler's screwdriver and you also need to clean it in between use so using something very gentle like um, this is a small microfiber cloth to clean it in between layers so I always dry it off and use it in between you don't want to use hot liquid with this um, and it can etch your glass and give you inaccurate readings or blurred readings um, so I always try to keep that clean Sap is a little bit sticky, obviously, so it's important to keep it clean. And I had mentioned that it is adjustable, so if it's looking blurry to you, you just turn the eyepiece dial until it comes into focus for you. So it is really, really hard to get this on camera. Um, my old Samsung S4 could film just about anything. It was great. And I have a Samsung S5. I'm cheap. I don't like to buy the newest upgrade. Um, okay, so when you're taking a measurement of your sap, you will see a boundary line between the upper blue field and the lower white field. And where they meet exactly on the scale, it is um, your, your reading of your percentage of sap. So if it's 2%, which is the average sugar tree, um, or maple tree. Some of them are 3%, some are 4%, as I said earlier in the video. So um, getting this really can help you determine what your final syrup is going to be, how many containers they have lined up, and th things like that. 
Um, it's not just using the hydrometer uh, and the test cup. So this really is helpful in knowing that. The first two years I made syrup, I didn't have this. And from the maple syrup supplier, I think it's roughly $46. There are digital uh, refractometers also that are very expensive. Let me show you a shot of that. So these are some of the digital um, refractometers that you can use, but due to the expense in my small operation, I am not going to get into this price range for some of my supplies. Okay, so just to show you um, about the expense of this, I got out my um, catalog for maple syrup supplies, and this refractometer is from 0 to 10 degrees, and mine goes, the reading says 30 degrees. Um, it is $98 for just the simple version. Um, the electronic versions, where you can just put a drop on there and have it read for you, is uh, $215 for this one, $435 for this one, uh, goes up to 85 degrees, and this one is... 0 to 10 and it is $170. I am not going to shell that out. I told you last year when I picked this up, uh, somebody had bought it for a science project. The simple version that is only me measuring bricks is 0 to 30 degrees and is roughly 12 to maybe $15 on eBay. That's fine and good enough for me. I just need the simple reading. Um, to be able to do that. Uh, my book actually says that testing hot syrup on this, um, because it cools so rapidly, it can create a blurred shadow in the optical refractometer, making it difficult or impossible to read, and that, uh, let's see, a significant amount of water can evaporate from the tiny hot syrup sample and affect the density reading. So always use it cold. Um, if water does get into this, you might as well just spend the $12, $15 and buy another one. If you had the $98 version, um, I'd definitely be a lot more uh, careful about doing that. You don't want to drop it in your bucket um, of sap. So, you know, always have a good hold of that so that it doesn't get damaged. But this is my refractometer, everybody. So thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all next time.